Good morning. It's 92.1 WROU and the perfect time for us all to get together and talk about the walk to end Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's is a disease that stole my mother from me. And I've watched it steal so many memories from other people and their families. And it's time for us to get educated about it, not only get educated, but then get inspired to move, to walk, and to be a part of raising money. And I have some awesome guests with me this morning, and I am so excited to have you with me. Um, it's, it's a wonderful day when we can come together and talk about ending Alzheimer's. And we have to do it. It's not something that we can put off. It's not something we can act as if it doesn't affect us because it will. So let me introduce to you, Karen Carter from the Alzheimer's Association here in Dayton. Karen, welcome. Oh, thank you for having us, Faith. It is my pleasure. And also Michael Booth, the co-chair of the Walk to End Alzheimer's. Michael, thank you for taking time to share with us today about this amazing event. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means and how we really get to getting it done. Now, Karen, you and I have been chatting a little bit about Alzheimer's and how the African-American community, a lot of times, and I will speak for myself, we're undereducated where Alzheimer's is concerned. And we have family members that develop it. We have individuals that we were used to put them on the porch I'm from the South. So we put them on the porch and they just sit there and we just love on them and bring food or whatever we would do. But there was something that was a little off, something that was a little different. And it got progressively worse with Alzheimer's. There are signs, there are symptoms, but for the families, for our individuals that suffer with it, there's also resources. So let's talk about Alzheimer's. What is it? And let's talk about some of the resources that are available to our community. So, and you know, you bring up a really good point, Faith. I mean, one of the number one things that we see with Alzheimer's is the taboo that comes yes. a stigma with even talking about it. So everyone will kind of think, you know, it is um, grandma's kind of not quite right or crazy Uncle Joe back in the, you know, the 40s and 50s are really what people thought of when somebody was coming down with a type of dementia. And, um, but it's really much more prevalent than that. And there are lots of things we can do to help diagnose and help identify what these symptoms are and help folks through that journey. Um, right now in Ohio, there are 220,000 people impacted by Alzheimer's in our little corner of the world, 30,000 people in the Miami Valley um, are wow. facing disease in some capacity. And um, it's those other hundred, um, the, those caregivers, uh, the other 120,000 people that need information. And the Alzheimer's Association is here to do that. And not a lot of people know um, that we do provide some education consults, helping families through the journey. If they're, if they're concerned about a loved one, they can call our 1-800 number and um, they can reach a, a licensed consultant that will guide them through next steps maybe help them make sense of things, um, provide them with resources in their community as far as support groups, and even sometimes referrals to the right um, clinical support to help them make a diagnosis so they know how to work with their loved ones. Well, let's talk about the resources. Because of COVID-19, so much of what used to be a walk-in, sit-down, or a gathering type situation, it's virtual now. It is. So we are 100% virtual. And, um, but when you call and I, I'm, this is my, my PSA is our 1-800 helpline. I don't know. There's my PSA. Um, when you call our 24 hour helpline, you are connected to somebody locally and that person will sit with you and do a virtual consult. It can happen over the phone or it's usually scheduled for a later time and will be in a Zoom or some other type of electronic fashion. Um, we also have support groups all over the Miami Valley that are being held and led by volunteers that come together each week, um, every week. And they're still bringing people together through all different phases of the illness. So you can talk with peers like yourself who might be facing this challenge at home. And um, we also provide education um, on our website, um, alz.org forward slash Dayton. If you click on our programs and support, there's a full list of all the different um, 
education sessions that are provided from um, 10 facts about Alzheimer's to healthy lifestyles through some of the more advanced programs that deal with more um, specific topics that families will deal with as people progress through the illness. And progressing through this illness, that takes an entire family. That takes every bit of support that you can find from every individual that is going to be affected. Because as a caregiver, we have to, A, understand we can't do it all. So we have to get the resources and support that we are going to need to help us through this process because it is definitely a process. Um, as caregivers, we have to come to grips with the fact that at some point we're going to have to relinquish some of these things that we just can't do and not feel guilty about it. Um, there are so many resources and the support is amazing. The support, I just cannot just, I can't sing their praises enough because everything that you're thinking, they have an answer for it. They have an explanation for it. And literally there is someone there to talk you down, to talk you through and talk you to a resolution for whatever your case may be. Alzheimer's is prevalent in the African-American community and we are getting better about getting educated, but there could be more. The 24-hour helpline is on the bottom of the screen. And one of the things that I encourage you to do, I used to sit and just cry because I didn't want anybody to know how helpless I felt in this time. They'll let you cry with them too if you just call. Just call and get the information and access to the resources that you need because you're going to need the support. Now let's talk about this amazing walk that is coming up. Now, this is something that I just absolutely love because with COVID again, a lot of things are moving virtual. And with it moving virtual, that means it's gonna be a little different than it was before. Michael, welcome to the conversation. Tell us about the walk. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Faith, thank you very much for letting us participate in this. We really appreciate it. We appreciate the opportunity to appear before your audience and before you and give an opportunity to talk a little bit about the walk and about Alzheimer's. Um, so our walk, you're correct, our walk this year is going to be different. Uh, it is going to be everywhere versus in one centralized location. So the walk itself is on October the 3rd, uh, the Dayton walk. We actually have five walks throughout the Miami Valley. Yes. There's a walk in Shelby County on September 12th and on Dark County on September 12th and Springfield is September 19th and Miami County is September 12th. I might have got mm -hmm. the dates wrong. I'm sure Karen will. Yeah, Dark County is me. September 26th. Dark County is the 26th. You. You covered. Thank, thank you. I'm not, I'm not perfect about that. But the, <laughs> the, the Dayton walk is on October the 3rd and it's going to be everywhere. So this year, instead of us all gathering in the same place, we're going to walk in our neighborhoods. We're going to walk in our parks. We're going to walk down the street. So in a way, it's going to be, to me, I'm really excited about seeing this difference because I love to see in the past, everyone put on their purple shirts and have the flowers and walk together. Yes, yes. But it's it's very inspiring, Faith, and I know you've experienced that before, but I'm kind of looking forward to seeing and just driving around a little bit and walking with my family in my neighborhood and getting out everywhere into every single community of the Miami Valley. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Well, the biggest thing I think when we talk about this walk and how we come together, it has always been so inspiring when I would show up at the walk and I would see so many people who had gone through what I was going through. And could you have no idea the power of a hug at the ALZ walk, the power of a hug, the power of other people saying, I know, I understand, and here's my number. Give me a call. I know what you're going through, but this walk is important because it raises money. And with the raising of the money is one of the things that people don't understand. They think this money comes 
for research from the government, from other places, or to support the resources. We need everybody's help. We need everybody to get involved with this and be a part of it. So tell us a little bit about um, how this day will work, how the day will work, sure. although it's virtual. Yeah. So, it, so you're right. It is a fundraising opportunity. It's really an experience where you we encourage everyone to sign up, go to uh, the Alzheimer's website and go to the walk website, go there and sign up, get your team together and walk and raise funds because you're absolutely right, Faith. This disease isn't going to cure itself and it's not going to cure itself through the government to, um, uh, giving us money to cure it. I mean, that's helpful and we will accept every dollar the government wants to give to us, right. but that's not what's going to cure this. It's going to be you, it's going to be me. Much like you, Faith, my my father has Alzheimer's and we struggle with that. And, you know, I realize that if we don't do something, if you don't do something, if I doesn't, don't do something, if Karen doesn't do something, if all of us don't do something, we'll be experiencing this for a long, long time. And we really need to get together go out for the walk, raise some funds so that we can cure this disease. And if you don't have an opportunity to walk, I understand that, that's fine. Go to the website and Karen can give the email address, go to the website and we can get the, you know, you can donate to some of your friends, donate to some of your family, donate to a random person, which I absolutely love to do, is just go to the website and donate to a random person who doesn't even know who I am. They're like, who's that guy? Right, well, right but it's fun and it, and it inspires them to walk in to raise more funds. Well, and you have to think about it. When we are looking for an opportunity to donate to something, this is definitely it. I know with COVID, people have been at home for a long time and walking was one of the ways that I really worked with my own anxiety in trying to just relieve some of the pressure and some of the stress of being alone of being, you know, away from my friends and my new normal. So walking can be a great thing because we can raise money in order to stop Alzheimer's and we got to end it, but we have to understand it's going to take all of us. It is definitely going to take all of us. Log on to the website, www.alz.org forward slash Dayton. You can sign up and this year's theme for the walk is just so, so timely. It says walk is everywhere. That means you can walk laps at, with your friends at lunch. You can walk with your family in the cul-de-sac. You can get your stroller buddies together and get the babies out and have a great walk and raise money to end Alzheimer's. One of the things that I love about this walk is that we are affecting our own community in raising this money. Can you talk about that a little bit, Karen? So the dollars that are raised locally, all of the services that we provide, um, the 1-800 number, um, when you raise $500, that funds um, two consults, um, two family consults in our office, one-to-one, -one, at no cost to the families who desperately need that help. That's awesome. Um, $1,000 funds our helpline um, for a day. So all of our services are offered to the community, to individuals at no cost. Um, so research is a big part of what we do, but actually being present for the people in our community that need help, those mm -hmm. dollars go right back into supporting each other. And if I could leave a thought for folks, you know, a lot of folks I think tend to look at fundraising in this environment and think so many people are impacted in hard ways. Um, one of the greatest gifts we can give to each other is when things are tough, um, helping other people makes the light shine a little brighter in right. the darkness. So what I challenge people to do is let somebody else make the decision um, as to how they want to help. Ask them, give them the gift of mm -hmm. making an impact to something that means a lot to you, to all of us. Um, and together by asking, you give everybody else the gift of helping. And um, right now we all need to know we've got the ability to do that. So thank you so much. It's my pleasure. And we felt or have felt so helpless during COVID. 
we have felt so different and so because it's it's something we've never seen before now imagine that impacting someone who is suffering with alzheimer's or a parent with dementia who could traditionally go to an adult daycare who could traditionally be in the presence of an, an additional caregiver in a center situation so that the caregivers could <sighs> exhale during the day, regroup, recharge. That's all virtual now. And some haven't even made it back to being able to be in group settings yet. This walk is going to help everybody. Yeah. It may not change your life today, but Think about the individual's lives that you are impacting by participating. So I want you to log on www.alz.org forward slash Dayton. Get your team together, get registered. And the thing I want you to remember about this walk, you can do it anywhere. You can do it everywhere. So if you're out walking laps at the high school track, or if you're mall walking, if you're doing whatever walk that you normally do on a regular basis, count it up and let it be a part of this amazing walk. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank you, Faith. Oh, thank you, Faith. Thank you, Michael. I know, it, and it's so awkward. I just want to hug everybody, but you can't. It's virtual, and we are absolutely grateful for the opportunity to participate in the walk to end Alzheimer's. Need the information? It's right on the bottom of the screen. And of course, you can always visit our website at 921WROU.com, where we have a page dedicated to this so that you can get the information that you need and get your group together. And if you're already walking, make it count. It's just that simple. Thank you guys for being a part of us today. And of course, thank you for checking out Faith Daniels Live with 92.1 WROU.